Hi everybody, Joe here from Shadow Speak Photography. Very nice to see your smiling faces again here on YouTube. So today I'd like to show you how to take an image that looks like this and then add multiple objects to it using Augmented Sky in Luminar AI. So it looks like this. Now in Luminar 4, that was a fairly straightforward process because we could just add layers and add as many objects as we wanted. Luminar AI has seen the removal of layers from the software. So we have to jump through a few extra steps to accomplish this. It's not hard to do, but there are some catches to it and I'm gonna show you how and why to do it uh, in the way that I'm suggesting. So, hey, before we get started, just like to say thanks for watching and if anything in this video helps you out, please help me out by hitting that subscribe button and ring the bell to get notified of future updates on this channel. So, thanks for watching. Let's get started. Okay, so I am here in Luminar AI, and I have this cityscape up that I want to make look a little bit more futuristic. So I'm going to add some planets to it, and I'm actually going to use the Luminar Planet Pack 1. That's actually available on my website, and I'll put a link down in the description. It includes a whole bunch of different planets, and uh, it's only $14.95, so it's probably one of the more reasonably priced planet packs out there. Uh, you can take a look at that if you wanted to right here and see all the things that come with it before and after. And at the end of this video, I'll include a coupon code so that you can get a little discount on it. But now that we moved on past that, let's throw some objects in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, of course, in Luminar, open up your photo as you normally would. And then we're going to go over to the uh, Augmented Sky, which is right here in the Creative panel. Select Augmented Sky, and now you're going to select whatever you would like. Now, if you have custom objects loaded, they're gonna show here in this section first, and down here are the pre-installed ones. You also have this option here to show custom sky objects. I do have that, so to speak, Luminar Planet Pack 1 loaded, and here are all my custom objects. Uh, ready to go. You can't actually load them from there, which is kind of odd. You can only see them, but I mean, I guess that comes in handy in being able to view them, but you can select them from the menu here. So I'm going to start off with, um, let's see, how about Callisto? And that places a planet for me in the sky. Now I'm going to press this place object button right here, and I think I'm going to put it up in the corner here. And I'm going to get it out of here because it's going to, the software is going to, you can already see the masking problem that's going on here. So we're going to bring this up and we just put it like, so it's just kind of like behind that bridge there like that. And that kind of looks nice. And I'm just going to hit place object and it's there. It's really pretty much as simple as that. Now you can do a few things. You can change a little bit of the temperature of the object that you can see it doesn't really make much of a difference. Um, amount will kind of just fade it in and out. Okay, and relight again, it is very similar, just kind of fades it in and out a little bit. So, usually the defaults look reasonably good. And if you go into advanced settings, you can play around a little bit with the refinement of the mask and you can defocus the object a little bit. This one actually looks pretty good in terms of defocus, so I'm not really going to do much with that. Um, so I'm pretty happy with the way this is. Also, you know, sometimes it's fun to flip them just to see how it looks the opposite way. I kind of like this one the way it is, so I'm not gonna flip this one, but if you did look up in like these custom sky packages, like some of them, like Mercury here is faded on this side. That one I would wanna flip, I think, so that the fade would be off to the right-hand side of the image. So now, if I wanted to add a second object in Luminar 4, I would just add a layer. But in Luminar AI, if I go ahead and pick anything else, uh, let's say the sun, whatever, you see it replaces it with the first object. So I don't want to do that, and I can't even actually step backwards on it. So now I have to re-add my image. So we can't do it that way. So what we need to do is we need to export this image, and then we're going to basically re-import it. Now, there's a couple of things that I just want you to keep in mind when you export. One of the things is 
don't export as a JPEG. I've imported this image as a JPEG. JPEG in and of itself applies compression to an image. So if I now export this as a JPEG, I'm applying more compression. I'm going to import it. I'm going to add another object. I'm going to export it as JPEG. That's going to add more compression. If I do it a third time, I'm adding even more compression. And every time I do that, I slightly degrade the quality of this image. The more and more and more you export a JPEG as JPEGs over and over and over again, the more is that compression is compl up applied and the greater degradation of the quality of the photo you're going to have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this, but I'm going to export it as a TIFF so that I don't lose any quality to this image. So I'm going to say save to disk, save photo to disk. And the dialog should come up allowing me to export this photo. But as you can see, it is not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to troubleshoot this. I'm going to stop the video for a minute. I'm going to fix it and then we'll get right back. Okay, so I closed Luminar AI. I relaunched it. It now is bringing up the export image dialog. I don't know what happened there. doesn't matter. It's easily fixed. Okay, so you see right here we have my export location. I'm going to change this to dash one. So it's a different image. I don't want to overwrite my image, my original image so that I can go back and work on this again later if I don't like something. Okay, so I'm changing the image name. You see it's TIFF actual size. Okay, and I'm just going to hit export. Now it's going to take a while for this to export. Um, you know, that that's again one of the Luminar hiccups. It's not extremely speedy with this with its exports. So we'll take a break for a second and then we'll come back after it's exported. Okay, so my image has exported. Now what I need to do is I need to go back to my catalog. And what you're gonna have to do is to, in order to see the image, now don't let this one fool you. It looks like the one we just saved, but it's not. It's the one we're currently working on. So if I go out of the directory and then back into the, the directory again, now you'll see we have the new image. If you click on it down here, you'll see the image name which is what we named it demo one. And so this is the one I want to work on. Just double click it and then hit edit. Make sure you're not working on the same image. If you are, you're going to lose your original object and, and, and you're going to be back to kind of square one. So it's a little tricky because you see, like I, like I said here in the catalog, these two look exactly the same, but when you click on one, you click on this one, you look down here, this is the JPEG. I click on this one, city demo one TIFF. This is the TIFF. This is the one I want to be working on now. So we go to edit and I can go back to augmented sky. And now I can add another image. So let's, uh, let's add something with a little different color. Let's add Venus uh, and that looks good. Let's place Venus. Be careful not to double click on these. My tendency is always, I want to double click on them and double clicking resets it to the way it was. So don't do that. Um, once you're done and you've got it to the size that you want, hit place. So now that's not bad, but what I want to do is I want to mask it a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and erase it from this section here. So there's no overlap of these two planets. So it appears behind the other planet. Let's just make sure Got a little touch up there. Okay, so that looks good. So now they kind of look like they're behind each other. I'm happy with these clouds in front. So Luminar has kind of let these colored clouds stay in front of the planets and they should be. Obviously the planet, the planets would not be in front of the clouds. The clouds would be in front of the planets. Now this one's further away, right? So let's go to advanced and let's defocus this one a little bit because it is further away, maybe three. Okay, so that looks good. I am happy with that. And again, I'm going to go over to export. Okay. Save photo to disk. And I'm going to name this one two, because if I don't name it two, it's going to get super confusing when we go to import again, because we'll end up working on the same object because in Luminar AI, there is no simple way that I can find to close a photo that you're currently working on. So the easy way would be to export it, close it, and then reopen it. There doesn't seem to be a way of doing that other than loading in another image. So 
we'll name it two. We're going to go back to the catalog and make sure that we're working on uh, TIFF number two. Okay, so it's exported. Let's go back to the catalog. Of course, it's not showing, so let's just go out of the directory and then back into the directory, and now you'll see it's here. So we now have CD Demo 1. We don't want to work on 1. That's the one we're currently on. We want to work on 2. So let's select this one, CD Demo 2, TIFF, double-click on it, and now we can go to Edit. And let's add a third object. Uh, let's give it a moon. Let's try like Mimus or something along those lines or Ganymede. And you uh, expand fans out there, you'll see a lot of these uh, planets and moons from the expanse. But let's go with the Mimus because that one is going to look good, I think, for this. And there it is. And it's kind of faded and it's faded on the right side, which I would want. So I'm not going to flip it. I, I like the way that looks. Let's hit place and we're going to make this one really small. So it looks like it's a moon. And we'll put it over here in the distance. I like that. That looks nice. And let's defocus this one just a little bit more. So the other one we use three. Let's use four. And that's good. So I'm, I'm happy with that. And now at this point, if I, if I was done, I can now go here and export this as a JPEG. So if I said save to disk, now instead of using TIFF, I can go ahead and use JPEG if I wanted to and now export this as a JPEG. So again, I'd probably bump up the quality maybe around like 85 or so, uh, somewhere in that range. If I was going to export this to the web, 96 DPI, 240 is for print. There is no reason to export at 240 dots per inch uh, to the web. There is no screen that can display 240 dots per inch. A monitor that people are using at home displays at 96 dots per inch, and that's why we use 96. It makes your file size much smaller, and it's the appropriate DPI for display on a computer monitor. So there you have it. That's kind of how that works. Um, again, that's using the Luminar Planet Pack from the Show to Speak website. Link is in the video description, and I did promise you a coupon code. So if you want to pick this up, you can save a little bit of money by using the coupon code YouTube. So there you have it. Um, I hope this helps you out and explains to you why you want to go through these multiple steps of TIFF to preserve your image quality until you're finished and then export as to JPEG. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, please hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it. Appreciate you. Great to see you again here on YouTube as always. Leave me a comment and let me know what you think. Take a look through my comments. You'll see I almost always answer. So if you have a question, Throw a comment out there. I will get back to you. Thanks again. I'll see you next time, YouTube. Bye-bye.